Hey all, Crash Mystery Cleaning, Cleaning Windows of the Five Coast. It is a sunny day in Lancashire today. Well, certainly my part of Lancashire anyway. <laughs> um, we've been really busy this week. We've had the usual jet washing, uh, exterior cleaning, window cleaning, uh, gutter clearing, you name it. We've been pretty much in the exterior cleaning sense. We've been all, all, all hands on deck this week. Um, had a meeting with our soon-to-be new accountant um on friday just gone and yeah basically um we're having to tackle the issue of vat now what is vat for the for the uninitiated vat is basically a situation where if your business turns over £85,000 or more per year, the government obliges you to ultimately put your prices up by 20% and then pass that charge onto the government, onto to HMRC. It's basically a tax on the consumer, right? It makes all your goods, services, products um, more expensive if you turn over more than £85,000. Now, turnover is vastly different to profit. Um, I don't earn £85,000 a year. I should cocoa. Um, my wage, if you like, is, you know, a lot less than that. Um, that's not to say, you know, I, I'm paid poorly. Um, you know, I make, a, I make a good amount of money for, you know, for the work that I put in, etc. But the issue at hand is basically we're in a situation now where ultimately we face having to put our prices up, pass that onto the, that that cost onto the consumer. The consumer then pays us. We then hand that money to the government. We are you're effectively an unpaid tax collector on behalf of Her Majesty's government. Um, trust me when I say this. I could waste that money a damn sight better than uh, Rishi Sunak can, but that's a different story. Um, so what are we doing to ultimately um, make, you know, when, you know, I'm in a situation where I don't want to raise my prices, but then I want to grow my business. So what's the, what's the alternative? So what we're doing is basically is splitting our, splitting the company up. We're going to have the residential window cleaning round um in a sole trader name i.e my name so it'll be you know chris addis trading zestry cleaning um sole trader that is to say i am johnny on the spot i'm responsible if something goes wrong it's on me um and then we're setting up another limited company um where we're going to call it something else uh, we're going to basically call it you know something something else trading is estuary cleaning limited um Trading Zestry Cleaning. And that business is going to focus purely on commercial um, commercial window cleaning, jet washing, you know, gutter clearing, um, any exterior ad hoc work, if you like, is going to be carried out in that business's name. And those customers are going to pay, a VA, pay the VAT. Whereas my residential customers... I, I I really don't want to raise my residential prices um, because, we're, like I say, we're in the middle of the cost of, cost of living crisis at the minute. So immediately I'm obliged to raise my prices by 20% or I have to swallow the cost myself and pass on that money to the government regardless, right? Well, I'm not prepared to take, take a 20% pay cut and I'm not prepared to force that 20% rise on my customers they are ultimately the reason why I am successful uh, because they've provided me with work a means of income, etc. They've been loyal. They've been, they've stood by us, etc. Uh, even through COVID and all that sort of good stuff. Um, the last thing I want to do while we're having this cost of living crisis is to slap, you know, slap them with a 20% rise um, and kick them when they're down. Um, so in my, so we've, we've looked at it and we basically said that businesses so that's whether you're um, a shop front, whether you are a multi-million pound business, a hotel, a care home, etc. They are the ones that's going to foot the bill. 
uh, for VAT and we're still going to pass that on uh, to the government. But ultimately, it's the businesses, it's the um, entities that can afford to pay VAT that will pay it, um, whereas my customers um, will will not will be to some you know to some extent shielded from that. Um, now the good news will be is obviously as I move my commercial work over into an, another limited company, that will give me a bit more breathing room in the sole trader business. So I can go up to 85 or just below 85,000 pounds without having to force VAT um, on those customers. So I will have a gap that can, that can be filled where I will pay my normal taxes there and then VAT income tax, corporation tax will be paid on the limited company. Um, and from there we can grow. Okay. So Another reason for me wanting to do this as well is because I want to get into property. So we're going to use um, the money generated, if you like, from the commercial side um, and loan it to another limited company for the purposes of property. And then we're going to start renting houses and stuff like that out to people. That's basically the plan. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of admin. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of paper chasing. It's a lot of conversations that need having um with people who are far cleverer than me so yeah it it's strange because when you when i very first started the business again when i very first started the business i i i never thought it would get to this point where we'd be forced to sort of make these choices if you like between you know um i never thought we'd come close to eighty five thousand pounds turnover um per year never in a, never in a million years but we are in, we are now in that situation now, and it demands um, my attention, if you like. So certainly focuses the mind. Uh, you'll come up with all kinds of solutions to to sort of um, you know make sure the situation favours you. But um, while we're on the subject of VAT, I find it interesting and rather disturbing that the UK government can see fit to impose VAT on consumers at a time where they're being smashed to pieces by multi you know multi billion pound corporations that are making an utter killing etc um so you probably didn't know this about VAT right the UK government as a whole last year i believe took in 830 billion pounds collected from taxes, from various taxes, from duties on fuel, alcohol, tobacco, um, VAT, amongst others. That grand total was £830 billion. And £130 billion worth of that was, um, was VAT. Now, VAT is paid on your gas bill. It's paid on your water bill. It's paid on... Um, all your utilities, mobile phone bills, your car bill, the fuel you put in your car. Don't believe me? Look at your receipt. It will say, it will, there'll be a little thing on there that says VAT. So, riddle me this. The UK government gave a rat's ass about people. Why aren't they uh, getting rid of VAT? They spent more than £130 billion keeping folk at home, didn't they, during COVID? Food for thought, peeps. Don't like what's going on? Talk to your local MP. I already have. Have a good day, peeps. Keep on keeping on.